our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, the water of baptism, when combined with your word, is a powerful thing for us as followers of Jesus. Lord, help us each day to remember baptism and the peace and hope it brings us. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers, sisters in Christ, from the outside looking in, baptism may not look like all that much. Some water is applied to a person, whether it's sprinkling, pouring, immersion, a few words are said, and that's it. It really, really don't look or feel all that different afterwards. So really, what's all that special about baptism? But as followers of Jesus, we know that baptism is a critical part of our daily journey of life and faith. Through baptism, as I mentioned in the children's message, you're forgiven, and the big one for me, being marked as a child of God, a child whom God loves unconditionally. You can remember your baptism every day of your life. Now we heard today's reading from Luke that Jesus was baptized as well. The difference between Jesus' baptism and ours is that he technically did not have to go through it because he did not need that assurance that it brought forgiveness of sin. He's God. But you and I do. Jesus, in fact, told us, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So as I mentioned, one of the gifts of baptism is forgiveness. The Bible teaches us that when Ananias baptized Paul, he said, get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away, calling on his name. Baptism is one of several ways that our Lord gets through to us. He delivers the goods of what Jesus brought us through a cross and through an empty tomb, including that forgiveness each one of us desperately needs. And he'll also bring you forgiveness again when you receive the gift of the Lord's Supper. He does it when one follower of Jesus says to another, I forgive you. In fact, I think it's hard to look at Jesus being baptized and not remember our baptism as well. Now, maybe you can't remember it. Some of you were probably quite young when it took place. I was just several weeks old. But you do know what happened. Maybe you have a baptismal certificate somewhere. I dug mine out this week. And it says you were baptized. But nevertheless... When you look at Jesus' baptism, you really can't help but think about your own and maybe want to do some blending of those two. So here's what I'd like to suggest this morning. Wouldn't it be great to look at Jesus' baptism and our baptism in thoughts of mission? Jesus' baptism began his mission. What if we look at baptism in the same way and say, Right out of the gate, or maybe out of the faucet, as it were, God has given me a mission as one of his own disciples. I'd like to dig a little bit more into that this morning. The first thing that we notice in Jesus' baptism and in ours is that the mission begins with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches that when someone is baptized, the Holy Spirit, the word is indwell or dwells within us. We're born again of water and the Spirit. The Spirit enters us and does that amazing work that He does in our lives. In fact, in the case of Jesus, we're told in the book of Luke that the Spirit in His case descended on Him in the form of a dove. That same Spirit then drove Him out into the desert to face Satan head on. It empowered Him to take on with Satan face to face. As you look through Jesus' ministry, there are a number of times that he cast out demons. But when he did that, the Gospels tell us he did it not in his own name, but he did it in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Gospels teach us when Jesus was sent out into the land of Galilee, he would center his ministry there, and he would pray to his Father in heaven in the power of the Spirit. When those Roman soldiers 
took Jesus' body off the cross, stuck it in a tomb, and buried him after being crucified, and then shut the tomb, it was the Holy Spirit who breathed life back into that lifeless body and made Jesus come alive again. That's crystal clear from 1 Peter 3.18. My point is this. You cannot look at the mission of Jesus without seeing the power of the Spirit at work within him. The Spirit also gives us power and hope in the face of evil. The Spirit speaks his word to us and motivates us in the mission that God gives us. But it begins with baptism. <laughs> I love the old story of a preacher who was rather full of himself. Hope I'm not in that boat. He was a pastor at a homeless mission in a large city. If someone wanted a meal when they would come in off the streets, they first, and I've seen this in a number of missions that I've been involved with, they go to a worship service. This pastor had memorized Rudyard Kipling's poem, If. And he was rather proud of that. At the end of a sermon, he'd get all wound up emotionally, <clears throat> and then he went into his closing, which, I know you can't read it, you can tell what it is, that included this poem, If. It went like this. If you can keep your head when all those about you are losing theirs and blaming on you, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters the same, well, by now the tears were just running down his face. <clears throat> if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance, run! Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And what's more, then you'll be a man, my son. <clears throat> there was total silence in the mission when he was done. But then one voice piped up in the back of the room. Uh, pastor, that's fine and all. What if you can't do it? What if you come up short? What if you're facing this mountain of a challenge that is simply bigger than you are? Silence erupted. <laughs> but the answer for followers of Jesus is really a simple one. I am baptized. I was given the gift of the Holy Spirit. The one that was in the water took my place on a cross. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Sounds biblical, doesn't it? In my baptism, I was given the power from God that's bigger than anything I face. When Jesus was baptized, he received a crystal clear affirmation of his identity. That voice from heaven came down and said, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. For the rest of his life, people would question Jesus' identity. He would leave those waters, go out to the hills in Judea, and be tempted by Satan. Every time Satan would tell him, If, not the same poem, but if you are the Son of God to try and threaten Jesus' identity. He hoped that Jesus might lose track that he was the Son of God. So from heaven, Jesus, excuse me, the whole God spoke to his Son and said, This is my Son whom I love. Listen to him. To be a follower of Jesus that is on a mission that will transform and change people's lives, you have to know who you are. You are much more than what you do for a living. You're more even than a husband, wife, mom, dad, grandparent. You're a lot more than your depressions and disappointments. Our lost dreams too often can define who we are. So who are you? Let's make it simple. You're an adopted son or daughter of God. God chose to make you his own. That's really the best answer I have to the big questions in life. Where did I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? All of those questions get answered in knowing who you are. You are one who belongs to the King of Kings, 
and the Lord of Lords. Didn't realize those banners were going to be up today, how that fits in. In Garrison Keillor's book, Leaving Home, he tells a story about Grace Tollefson and her family. Grace had married a guy named Alex Campbell, but he turned out not to be the greatest of guys as he deserted his family. And they had three children before he left. So Grace has to come back home to Lake Wobegon. She lives there in a beat-up trailer with her children. One day, though, she gets a letter from a man in Philadelphia. He asks if she could tell him a few things about her ancestors. So she does the research and gets that information back to him. A week or two later, she gets a letter that begins with, Your Royal Highness. The man claimed that Grace was first in line in succession in the House of Stuart, which would be the royal family of Scotland. So, could you imagine living in a deserted trailer in Lake Wobegon and now being the heirs apparent to the throne of Scotland? They were blown away at first, but they eventually started to believe it. Grace's attitude suddenly changed. She had royal blood. She was different. Oh yeah, the surroundings were the same, but the people were now different. Her son Walter later found out this was a huge hoax, just trying to get some money out of her. But, she, but he never told the rest of the family because it changed the way they looked at life. Walter remembers his mother saying to him, Walter, you're a prince. Someday we're going to Scotland, and they will crown you as a prince. Same people, same setting, but for them it was a hoax. But for you, it is not. You are a daughter or son of the King of Kings. He has adopted you into his family. You belong in God's family. That is your identity. It does not and it will not change. That identity was given to you in the water of baptism. It's a matter of sheer grace that God gave you that identity. And then finally, in the baptism of Jesus and our baptism, the mission begins not just with the power of the Holy Spirit and your identity as a child of God, but as your role as a servant. When you look down at Jesus in the Jordan River being baptized, humbling himself, we realize he didn't have to do that. Luke tells us that he bowed his head in prayer. That's a humble picture of someone who is willing to take the form of a servant. When God says, this is my son in whom I delight, it sounds an awful lot like Isaiah 42, verse 1, where it says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. God looked down on his son, recognized him as a servant, and says, you nailed it. That's exactly what I want you to do and be. Now we all know it's not always easy to follow Jesus. Sometimes we are called to take up our own cross and follow him. So just like Jesus, the Father is pleased when he finds that light in us as we serve him and others. Pastor Jim Dennison served as a missionary in Malaysia, and he served a very small church. One of the girls came up one day to be baptized. Dennison tells a story of how he noticed some luggage had been placed off to the side up front in the worship area. Well, well whose luggage is this? The girl said, mine. Her dad said that if she became a Christian, she could never come home again. And so when she came to be baptized, she brought her luggage along because she thought that she would have to give up her family to follow Jesus. She was willing to take that servant role on as she, through the water of baptism, was marked as a child of God. When you think about your baptism, I hope it's more for you than just a ritual. I hope that it's an empowering dynamic in your life that reminds you every single day, I am baptized.
Christ. I am a forgiven child of God whom he loves unconditionally. And I am on a mission. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of our Lord Jesus. Amen.